number four. Three, four. 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 Woo! Taylor, I'll be portraying the role of Old Blue Size from the play The Brother Size, Act Two, Scene Four. <laughs> Slam! Since day one, day one you've been fucking up. Not just the other day when you were standing here looking all lost and stupid, all high on life, and a little bit of weed that fool like won't find you to piss, nah. Nah, hell nah. From day one, on the leg bus stopped taking us to church. I stopped going because I didn't want to go in the first place. But you kept getting up every morning. You kept getting up every Sabbath and going down to the river to wash your fucking sins away. And everybody say, look at little size taking up his cross with Jesus. Look at him, he only nine. Ooh, look at that devotion for Jesus. You should be like your brother Ogun. You should go to church like Juicy. You know what I wanted to say? Fuck that nigga and the church. I was jealous. I wanted to be you for a moment, little size. I wanted to be just like my little brother. Until me and Alekbo found you using the money you were stealing from collection in the crap game. Yeah. Yeah, and then everything turned. Everything turned from right around landed on me. Everybody say, he only nine. If you would have been a better role model, little goon, he wouldn't have acted like this. If I would have, if I... <laughs> On the leg was sealed it though. That miserable old ass lady. She gonna say, your mama would have been so disappointed in you, letting your brother go like that. Emotion would have hated you feeling her, Ogun, letting your brother go. Letting you go. I let you go. I let you go. I got one image of my mama in my mind. One. And it fucks with me at night. She's standing there near the water. My mama's standing out, looking out, looking out at the golf belly full of you. And she's standing there. Hold my hand, tight, tight, <clears throat> tight, just her on the water, us. That's all I got left of my mama, and you in that picture. You a part of all I got left, nigga. So I held on from that day. I gripped onto your ass and pushed you through school. Forced you up and out, whatever the fuck you. I did it. I burned my chance at anything so that I didn't leave you behind. I would run after you and ahead of you so that I didn't, so I didn't leave you behind. But it didn't matter what I did. No matter if I thought you were fine, if I thought you were okay, somehow, somehow you would slip through and fuck up. And fuck up and fuck up. When you fucked up, somehow I fucked up. Somehow there's no escaping you. You say I ain't never been to the pen? Nigga, whenever you fall, everybody look at me like I fucking pushed you. That's my fucking life sentence. That's my lockdown. All my life I carried your sins on my back. And now you out here riding around in a car that I souped up and popped off. Only so they can find you in it with a fucking pound of power. Yeah, yo! What the fuck? Shut up. Shut up, shut the fuck up, don't you say it? You fucked up. Say that. You wanna say 
something for once in your life, say something for me. Huh? Say something for me. You fucked up. 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 I fucked up. Say. <laughs> Judges ready? Hello, my name is Cody Jackson. I'm a first year theater performance major hailing from Hampton, Virginia. And today I will be presenting a piece entitled Run Black Men Run and Knock Knock by Daniel Koa Beatty. <clears throat> Tell them who it is. I've been told every action begins with a thought. And if you don't watch what you're thinking, your thoughts will get the best of you. You see, the mind is like an untrained child. You have to teach it what to do, because sometimes my mind, he tells me, you'll never be enough. Why even try? You know it'll be tough, look at where you live. A place of broken hopes and broken dreams. And at night you lie in bed and you scream the silent screams of a bastard child without a father for a guide. There's no daddy by your side. So you push your cries away and you fill that space with rage. A rage that keeps you caged in a cycle that never ends. You're never gonna be better than the man who fathered you, able to create life, <laughs> but you can't follow through. Your daddy left, so you will too. The sins of the father will always follow the son. When life gets tough, the abandoned run. So sag of pants, wear a frown. Give up first before life tears you down. Run from dreams, run from hope. It's the only way to cope with the failure that you will be the spitting image of the man that you will never see. You see, these are the thoughts my mind, he says to me, trying to choke out any and all hope a possibility. That's why I delve into the depths of me and I talk back to my mind, all right? I've heard enough. I know my path is rough, but my mama, she was there as she helped me to prepare. Her father, she was not, but she still gave me a lot. You see, I defined my destiny. I won't let doubt get the best of me. I will father myself, and my children will see that a black man stays. This can all just be a phase. This cycle can end. It all depends on where we go from here. You say when life gets tough, the abandoned run. Well, I say, run, black men, run. Run to your children, hold them tight. Help them make it through the night. Be more than you think you can. Be a man, take a stand. And when you make it through, reach back and help another black man do what must be done. Run, black men, run. Run, black men, run. A fatherless child I may be, but I define my destiny. Run, black men, run. Run, black men, run. Run, black men, run. As a boy, I shared a game with my father. Played it every morning till I was three. He would knock, knock on my door, and I'd pretend to be asleep till he got right next to the bed. And then I would jump into his arms. Good morning, Papa. And my Papa, he would tell me that he loved me. We shared a game. Knock, knock. Until that day, where the knock never came. And my mama takes me on a ride past cornfields on this never-ending highway till we reach a place of high, rusty gates. A confused little boy entered the building, carried in my mother's arms, knock, knock. We reach a room of windows and brown faces. Behind one of those windows sits my father. I run joyously towards my papa, only to be confronted 
by this window. I knock, knock, trying to break the glass, trying to get to my father. I knock, knock, as my mama pulls me away before my papa even says a word. And for years, he has never said a word. And so 25 years later, I write these words. For the little boy in me who still awaits his papa's knock. Pa papa, come home, because I miss you. I miss you waking me up in the morning and telling me that you love me. Papa, Papa, come home because there's things I don't know and I thought maybe you could teach me how to shave, how to dribble a ball, how to talk to a lady, how to walk like a man. Papa, come home because I decided a while back I want to be just like you, but I am forgetting who you are. And so 25 years later, a little boy cries. So I try to father myself, so I try to heal myself, and I dream up a father who says the words, My father did not! Dear son, I'm sorry I never came home. For every lesson I failed to teach, hear these words, shave in one strong deliberate stroke to avoid irritation, dribble the page with the brilliance of your ballpoint pen, walk like a god and your goddess will come to you. No longer will I be there to knock for you, so you must learn to knock for yourself. Knock, knock, down doors of racism and poverty that I could knock. Knock, knock, down doors of opportunity for the lost brilliance of the black men who crowd these cells. Knock, knock, with diligence for the sake of your children. Knock, knock, for me, for as long as you are free, these prison gates cannot contain my spirit. The best of me still lives in you. Knock, knock, with the knowledge that you are my son, but you are not my choices. Yes, we are our father's sons and daughters but we are not their choices. Mm. For despite their absences, we are still here. We are still alive. We are still breathing with the power to change this world, one little boy and girl at a time. Knock, knock, run, black men, run. Knock, knock, run, black men, run. Knock, knock, run, black men, run. Knock, knock, who's there? We are. My name is Eric Hamilton. We, we are, are contestant, contestant number five, five, and we will be performing Act One, Scene One, from Reasons to Be Pretty by Neil LeBoot. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no. Yes. No, that's not. Uh, I didn't say that. Don't lie. Yes, you did. Steph. No, do not Steph me right now. Come on, Stephanie. Oh, Don't do that, you prick. Don't play the Stephanie game. Don't do that. What? I didn't say anything. I'm telling you the truth here! Whoa. And I definitely didn't say that word, so that's bull! I didn't! I would never say that about you, ever. And I'm not gonna be- Liar! Ah, I did not! I don't care what she told you. Look, I didn't say ugly, no, I'm not that- She was in the other room, you idiot! In the next room, okay? So don't try to land Armstrong your way out of this one! I'm not! I- barely mentioned you, that's all, in a nice way. It wasn't like some, look, God, I just want to go to- I don't care what you want to do. Okay, would you stop, please? No, I'm not going to stop. For what, huh? What for? Because I, I, so I can explain. You don't need to. I already heard all the explanations I want to hear, and I don't believe you. You got that? I don't believe anything that comes out of your mouth, ever! Yes, yeah, well, that's sad, okay? No, you're sad. That's what's sad here, mister. You, you are, you are sad, big time. This is just stupid, so I'm not gonna stay. Don't do it. Do not walk out of here while we're fighting, or I swear to God, I'll, I will murder your fish. Oh. Yes. I'll flush them, or I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes, but I will hurt you, and you will not. Okay, so you better just stay right there. Hey. Oh. Don't do that, God! Oh, but you better stay here and argue this out. Or I swear I will wreck your life. I don't care if I'm like going in or not, so. Man, this is. You're talking nuts now! Seriously! Don't say that either. 
I mean, boy, if you're looking for things to get crappy, then okay. But otherwise, I wouldn't say a thing like that. Nothing about me being psycho or that sort of junk. Uh-uh. No. Stephanie, listen. Please. Please. <coughs> Please is like something you crap out in your pants and are too embarrassed to clean up. I don't even want to listen to please. No! Okay, then I don't know what to say to you about this The because... truth! I might be willing to overlook your general stupidness if there was some sort of truth here somewhere. I'm telling you the whole... And don't say it if it isn't, because I'll know. You know that I'll know. You'll know it, and I will pounce on you like I was death itself if you're lying to me. Seriously, like death. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so? What? <laughs> don't you have to go to work? No, just black. I'm not. I'm just trying to... What did you say that she heard and called me about me? What? I didn't. God! I'm telling you the truth about what I'll do to you. I am. Steph. Greg. I really didn't say anything. God, it's not... I mean, well, what did she say that I... What? You don't remember. No, mm. no. I no. mean, I was I was talking with Kent and we were laughing and about stuff and about like I don't know work and how this guy who's a real goof has been begging us to join our softball team. So just joking about whatever. That's all. Come on, Steph. You know how we are when we get yeah. What? Just talking. Jesus. Going on about our lives and situations and tell me nothing. It's no big deal. Tell me what you said. I mean it. You are crazy. A goddamn woman. Tell me. Just tell me and I'll stop. No, no. You're crazy. Say it. I, say it. It's not. I didn't say. Oh, how did this happen? Why are you such a freak? I mean, this is like a serious personality, but you've got Say it to me. Say it now. <laughs> Fine. Fine. I will. I'm going to. Then tell me. Okay, just stop. Okay? <sighs> Kent said... Something about some new girl at work. Some, some new girl. Some new girl at work. Some girl who just got hired and he thought was hot. It said she was pretty, and I agreed. That was all. So that's it, huh? She's pretty. That's it. And nothing about me. Oh. Nothing about me compared to her. Nothing. Uh, no, no. No, nothing in comparison. Nope. You got this far. Don't mess it up now. I said, what I said was, uh, I know what I said. I said this. This is it. It was, uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, well, maybe Steph hasn't got a face like that, girls. Maybe her face is just a bit regular, but I wouldn't trade her for a million bucks. Something like that. You know, I was just... Regular! Yeah, that was all? Yes! Okay. See, I never said ugly. Even though she's beautiful. Pretty. But I meant regular as a compliment. What? It isn't! <laughs> 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 <laughs>